Swing, swing. <laughs> Only one rule in this fucking jungle. When the lion's hungry, he eats. Born into poverty in the United States, Pearson won a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford University, where he began selling marijuana to fellow students before dropping out and building his criminal empire by violence. To build the entire cognitive behavioral therapy unit. He now plans to sell his business to American billionaire Matthew Berger for 400 million pounds so he can retire peacefully with his wife, Rosalind. Bottom line is, I'll sell it to you for 400 million. Pearson shows Berger one of the labs where he grows his cannabis under the estates of aristocratic landlords, who need cash for the upkeep of their stately homes. If it's such a fat wedge, why don't you keep it? See, I've developed a reputation as a man who came up the hard way. Pearson is later approached by Dry Eye, an underboss for Chinese gangster Lord George. Dry Eye offers to buy out Pearson's business, but he refuses. Uncle, you should re just, just marinate on it. In the meantime, fuck off. Pearson's lab is then raided by amateur MMA fighters and aspiring YouTubers. The toddlers, who overpower the lab's guards, steal a vanload of marijuana and upload a rap video of their caper online. Days. Fucking no. Said to be a bit of puff. The fighter's trainer, known only as Coach, orders them to delete the video and is horrified when he discovers that the cannabis belongs to Pearson. Tell me you didn't put that foil porn online. It's white up, Coach. Take it down. Now! Following the raid, Pearson begins transferring his cannabis plants out of the estates as a safety precaution, while having Raymond investigate how the toddlers learned of the lab's location. Also, at the request of Pressfield, he agrees to bring Laura home. Raymond retrieves her from a council estate where she is living with several other addicts. Wife. <coughs> However, in a brawl with her flatmates one of Raymond's men accidentally pushes Oslan, a young Russian man, off the balcony to his death. Although Laura is then returned to her parents, she later dies of a heroin overdose. Coach visits Raymond, apologizes for his students' actions, and offers his services as penance. Now I can return your goods, but I can't return the inconvenience. Coach has captured Fuck, a henchman of dry eyes who had informed Coach's crew about the lab location although Fuck gets fatally run over by a train in a botched escape attempt. Pearson threatens Lord George for going after his lab and destroys one of his heroin labs in retaliation. George chastises Dry Eye for his insubordination in attacking Pearson and offering to buy him out. George nods to a henchman to execute Dry Eye, but the man executes George instead. Unknown to Pearson, Dry Eye is in league with Berger, who had wanted Pearson's business disrupted to reduce the price. Dry Eye has taken Lord George's place and still hopes to take Pearson's empire for himself. This is how it's gonna play out. You're gonna back the fuck off. Dry Eye tries to kidnap Rosalind, who kills Dry Eye's men before she runs out of bullets in her two-shot Derringer. <laughs> Raymond kills an assassin sent to kill Pearson. The two rush to Rosalind and Pearson fatally shoots Dry Eye as he is about to rape her. Hello, babe. Fletcher ends his story and Raymond orders him to leave his house. Fletcher has merely confirmed Pearson's suspicions about the link between Dry Eye and Berger. Of my house, because I'm going to bed. Raymond orders the toddlers to capture Big Dave. They drug him and film him having sex with a pig, threatening to post it online unless he drops his investigation and publishes nothing. Last night I made a film with an impressively sized farmyard pig. Bench. Pearson and Berger meet up again in a frozen fish plant, actually a cover for Pearson's European distribution operation. Berger drops his offer to 130 million pounds, on account of the recent disruptions it has experienced. But Pearson reveals his knowledge of Berger's plan, shows him Dry Eye's frozen body, and tells him he is keeping his business. I'll tell you how this. Pearson forces Berger inside a refrigerator, 
where he will freeze to death unless he transfers 270 million pounds compensation for the blood he now has on his hands and the cost of restoring order. You can then deal with the next consequence of your short-sightedness. Pearson admits he is not emotional about the money, but because Rosalind was assaulted in seconds from rape, he demands a pound of flesh from Berger's own body, anywhere Berger chooses, as compensation for this indiscretion. Fletcher approaches Raymond again for his payment, but Raymond reveals that he was tailing Fletcher all along. The toddlers have stolen his stashes of evidence after Raymond placed a tracker on him during their last encounter. A lot easier after I planted a tracker and put it with us, Fletcher. Fletcher reveals that he has also sold info to Aslan's father, a Russian oligarch and former KGB agent. The assassin whom Raymond killed earlier was one of the Russians. Coach kills two Russian hitmen sent to kill Raymond, while Fletcher escapes in the chaos. Pearson is kidnapped by two other Russians, but they are ambushed by Coach's students who want to solve Coach's problem. They riddle the car with bullets, killing the Russians and allowing Pearson to escape. Later, Fletcher decides to pitch the story as a film to Miramax. After his meeting, he gets into a cab only to realize that Raymond is the driver. So it's... Buenas tardes, Fletcher Mondo. Upon learning of Fletcher's capture, Pearson and Rosalind return to their cannabis empire and celebrate in each other's company.